Hello my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Thank you guys for joining me once again and uh, we're doing more live streams. But what we're going to do is go through um, our daily update. So this is going to be basically our daily update on everything that is happening right now. And so let's start with the big thing. And this is where Hurricane Dorian is expected to be on the 2nd. So three days from day, today, this is what we're going to potentially be looking at as we see it basically starting to impact the east coast of the U.S. and Florida in particular. And this has potential to be a very serious storm. So as we go over here and go out to AccuWeather, Florida and the Bahamas on high alert as Hurricane Dorian reaches Category 2 at the moment and it's gaining strength. And more than 20 million Americans face the possibility of feeling impacts from Dorian, including about 3.7 million senior citizens based on the current forecast. So as of 11 a.m. Friday, the National Hurricane Center said the storm's maximum sustained winds were at 110 miles an hour, just shy of a Category 3, and that's when you're over 111. So the storm's located about 480 miles to the east of the northwestern Bahamas. As forecasters predicted, the storm has begun to slow its forward motion with a current speed of 10 miles an hour down from 13 miles an hour. So obviously this is going to pose a serious threat to Florida and the Bahamas as it makes its way. And it, the big question is going to be, you know, where exactly is it going to last? And then what category is it going to be at impact? Most definitely this will be a major storm by the looks of it. Steering mechanisms will weaken while Dorian passes over very warm water with diminishing wind shear this weekend. So as a result, decrease in forward speed, but also a significant strengthening are expected. And it's likely it's going to hit Category 4, which is maximum sustained winds between 130 and 156 miles an hour. So think in terms of Hurricane Michael, which was in that range, and look at the damage that it did. Obviously, we'll have flooding rainfall, powerful storm surge, and uh, it's going to be obvious widespread flooding. Most definitely, there'll be some damage to property, life-threatening situation for sure. People are right now doing all they can to secure everything they need for themselves and their families. And uh, boy, that reminds me of Irma. When I was down there for Irma, it just was crazy because... From where I was, typically to get out of Florida and into Alabama might take you, you know, three hours or so, three three hours perhaps, and it took over 12. It took us 12 and a half hours, and at points it was just like being on a parking lot on the highway. So be aware of that, and uh, wouldn't wait to the last minute to decide on what you're going to do, and, and that's something that so many people do do, is wait to the very last minute. So obvious things, you know, this person's saying they've just filled up their car with gas, filled up the bathtub with water. Uh, you know, check your food supplies, medical supplies, all that. You know, if you have a generator, hopefully you do have that ready. Make sure you have gas, propane, and fuel for it. Um, without a doubt, you're going to have a lot of shortages going on, especially as this thing gets closer and if it is going to keep gaining in strength most definitely something to to look at and so here we see the projected path and this is from myfoxhurricane.com so impacting at either a four or a three most likely at the moment here you see the satellite as it makes its way towards the northern Bahamas. And a state of emergency is in effect. And the computer models now, as we see here, a couple of them now, you know, we had one yesterday, and now we have a few that are having it start to curve up the coastline. So, you know, don't lower your guard if you're in coastal Georgia or the Carolinas. Most definitely don't lower your guard interesting you see these uh this one here has it turning around <laughs> yeah that would be bad there was uh somebody made a comment yesterday about it's going to be a two impact storm 
so we shall see and we'll definitely keep an eye on these spaghetti models as hey, we get closer and over here we see tropical cyclone Podul hits Vietnam leaves two people dead 61,500 infected in the Philippines most definitely the tropical weather is ramping up as we are in peak season now and so this one killed two, affected over 61,500 people in central northern Luzon in the Philippines, made landfall in central Vietnam early Friday and has degraded into a tropical depression. But a lot of rain, a lot of rain which can cause mudslides and most definitely causes flooding as we see the area it came in at. And this is nothing like what we're going to see with Dorian as far as the strength of the storm. And over here we see we have at least seven dead, several missing, severe flash floods hit southern Morocco. And this one caused rivers to swell and swept across fields. And it was there's actually people watching an amateur football match. The victims were identified as six elderly men and one 17 year old boy, while one survivor was rushed to hospital due to flood sustained injuries. And there are videos here and uh, shows the devastation that was caused by this flooding. And we have seen this across the globe. Severe floods hit Uganda, claiming at least five lives as well. And this uh, the storm triggered a swelling of a river. Swept away victims were reportedly buried under the mud. Relatives of the people suspected to have been buried under mud across over 800 meters or 2,600 feet have been desperately trying to recover the bodies. Torrential rains have also damaged the area's coffee and banana plantations. So one of the victims was reportedly a 65-year-old man who was trapped in the ruins of his ravaged home as a result of nonstop five-hour rainfall. Injured victims were sent to General Clinic to recover. We've seen this just over and over and over, and so we could hear that one of the things to keep in mind is the elderly, and think about their situation and where they are. So a lot of times they're not so mobile, and they can't get out of the way of things themselves without help. At least eight people killed after tornado hits Hainan, China, as we see that damage there. Dormitories for workers collapsed at two construction sites, killing eight people. And there's video here for you guys to see as well. And we had another asteroid fly by close, this one at a quarter of the distance to the moon. And we had one at basically uh, 0.13 the other day. So there's been a lot of these. And um, this one also was relatively small in between 12 and 27 uh, feet in diameter. As we see the list of all the near near misses, there has been quite a few. As we see there. And Moscow is shivering through its coldest summer in recorded history. Over 150 years of data, this is the coldest one. So, you know, we have these extremes. And the extreme has been what we got, extreme flooding, extreme heat, extreme cold. Just these incredible extremes and setting and breaking records left and right. And then we have all this that's going on. And, uh, hmm, you know, we, we've talked about just how coincidental it is that it seems that everything is just coming up at once. And here we have the triple E threat. Eastern equine encephalitis, and it's in so many states. Uh, EEE fears sweeps the U.S. Officials in three states warn residents to stay inside at dawn and dusk and not to touch dying birds as well. So as you see here, the virus kills about one-third of people who develop it. That's pretty, uh, pretty fatal. When you get down to it, one-third is pretty scary stuff. Several have been left in comas or in life support. One case each confirmed in Michigan and New Jersey. Four confirmed cases in Massachusetts. Not a good situation. 
and uh, you know it can cause swelling of the brain and over here we see four confirmed West Nile virus cases in New Mexico and it does bring on long-term side effects as well and we have three cases of tuberculosis reported in San Diego as you see here San Ysidro High School USS Ron Home Richard and USS can't make out that first word there as there is a naval base in the area so USS Mackin Island and obviously tuberculosis was a terrifying disease of the past and we've had so many diseases of the past there are now diseases of the present such as measles mumps all you know, polio they're all kind of coming back and here you see leave dead birds alone Fairhaven health officials warn so you know steer clear and don't touch them and as we were saying before here on CNN the US eliminated measles in 2000 well that's over that is definitely over and uh, this is a speech that President Clinton was given back then saying how it's it's all over we've conquered it but it's back and New Zealand measles outbreak prompts tra travel warning so New Zealand is asking travelers to make sure they are immunized for measles before traveling to its biggest city Auckland as the country faces its worst outbreak in over 22 years so if you're thinking of traveling into or out of Auckland, you should make sure you're vaccinated at least two weeks before you go. And this includes children from 12 months old, so says Health uh, Minister Julianne Gentner. And measles cases are rising globally, including in wealthy nations such as the United States and Germany, where some parents shun vaccines mostly for philosophical or religious re reasons, or concerns and then it says debunked by medical science yeah that vaccines against measles mumps and rubella could cause autism well we're not going to get into that on this venue in depth uh, just because of well reasons that are obvious if you guys have seen the info that like I saw and I did post a video um, over on Patreon and you know just to let you guys know too uh, in Patreon for, for our Patreons there's going to be basically um, just some videos that go up over there through Vimeo uh, that will be touching on subjects that are too touchy for this venue and so uh, we have created a, a Vimeo account as well and so the Patreon uh, videos will basically, they'll get the first screening and then, you know, later on it'll end up going up several days later over on Vimeo. Uh, as we were saying, there's just, there's some topics that you just really can't discuss here anymore, unfortunately. And so who warns over dramatic resurgence of measles in Europe? So as we see, it's, it's everywhere you look. And uh, West Nile reported in two Montana people older than 60. And an Oklahoma man on the road to recovery after a mosquito bite left him paralyzed. And that was again due to West Nile. So West Nile and uh, Triple E, you know, those are definitely something that we're seeing a lot of cases of. And again, you know, there's probably more than what we are seeing as well. And we have Nebraska health officials reporting an outbreak of mumps in state. And meantime, we see here 1.3 billion tons of food are being wasted each year. How can we stop it? You know, as we said before, there's no reason for hunger. And if there really truly was a will, and we're saying this while in Yemen, estimates are 5 to 10 million people are facing starvation. And it's really because of the war that has been going on there. But there's just not the will out there to truly solve these issues. But they could be solved if there was the will. And uh, it's going to take people speaking up. It's going to take you and me and everybody else just being noisy and doing everything we can to force change. 
because you know yeah we're we're going into this period there's been so much crop loss and even with all the crop loss we have now there's still wastefulness there's still farmers being paid not to produce and uh you know in this situation and it, with the world situation going on it's just crazy it's totally crazy so secretive u.s government agency needs underground lair by friday yep and this is darpa defense advanced research projects agency so they've been famously involved with all sorts of secret ops uh, including neural implants for U.S. soldiers. Well, they made it known Wednesday in a tweet <laughs> that prompted some suspicious repl replies that they are urgently in need of an underground lair and fast by tomorrow, actually. So, attention, city dwellers were interested in identifying university-owned or commercially managed underground urban tunnels and facilities able to host research and experimentation. It's short notice. We're asking for responses by August 30th at 5 p.m. So if anybody's out there listening and they want to volunteer, go right at, go right ahead. And yeah, it's just crazy. You know, DARPA, of course, is on the cutting edge of so much technology. And uh, yeah, as it says here, as the solicitation might conjure dystopian visions or zombie apocalypses, uh, preparations like Resident Evil thoughts, right? It said, uh, DARPA told Fox News that the request is related to finding locations for its subterranean challenge urban circuit, a competition that's examining new approaches and technologies that could help first responders and the military navigate tunnels, the urban underground and cave networks. Really? Does it get curiouser and curiouser? I mean, what do you think? <laughs> you know, uh, there are so many underground hidden bases uh, i just wonder how expansive they are if you put them all together and over here visiting space is just going to be like going on a cruise so it says space hotel architect and this is a space hotel would you want to go on up and just uh, circle the globe and just take in that view and you know who knows how much you're going to have to spend to do it obviously this is going to be for the super elite and curiously the goal of this foundation is to have it operational by 2025 isn't that an interesting year it is an interesting year if you've uh, been following this channel and some others as well so they expect to have a hundred tourists visiting the station per week and obviously the costs are high but it's a curious curious date to have that done by so millions of black holes bouncing around the galaxy well they're bouncing around after being booted at birth so says a new study one of the leading theories about the origins of black holes suggests that they come from gargantuan supernova explosions and we've been talking about more of a micronova situation being a possibility with uh, our sun as well and perhaps not in the far too distant future so new research suggests these blasts might be so powerful they literally kick black holes around the galaxy and if proven correct this would mean that throughout the galaxy and indeed the wider universe there are likely millions of black holes bouncing around at fantastically high speeds of 43 miles per second this work basically talks about the first observational evidence that you could actually see black holes moving with high velocities in the galaxy and associate it to the kick the black hole system received at birth. Interesting stuff. Thankfully, there's not one in our neighborhood, or relatively close neighborhood. So astronomers baffled by cosmic mountain ranges jutting through the Milky Way and so they say the Milky Way's shape is basically that of like a frying egg. You can envision it sunny side up. And so they, there's something called the Gaia mission. And it recently created a celestial survey of a billion stars in the Milky Way. A billion. Think about that number. You know, think about that. Just in our galaxy, how much life do you think is out there? How much life do you guys really think is out there? A ton. There's got to be so much life out there. And some of those stars are far more older than ours. And so 
Potentially, there could be far more advanced civilization than ours, and there's also younger ones as well. And so this is just more interesting evidence, in my mind, of, of basically how obvious it has to be that life is out there. And if you guys have ever spent some dark nights out in the desert or out somewhere in the woods where you could see a wide expanse and you could see the Milky Way and re realize that here we are, we're on the spiral, but we're like two thirds of the way out. We're basically, we're kind of out in the boonies, kind of out in the sticks. And when you look inwards into the Milky Way and you see all those stars so close together, it just makes you think of things like the Galactic Federation and things like that. And also things like Star Trek and Star Wars as, you know, reality must be somewhat similar to those things. And this man's cancer free after cannabis oil helped him beat 12 brain tumors. He's only 30 years old. And thankfully he has basically beaten it. So that is awesome. After starting chemotherapy, the Hampshire businessman and his girlfriend began looking at alternatives. And in December of 2018, he started taking the cannabis oil. And by February this year, he decided to quit chemotherapy. Three months later, MRI scan on his tumors revealed they had actually stopped growing. By August, medics said he was almost completely cancer-free. It's quite surreal. He was shaking like a leaf. It was the best news he had ever imagined. And he's not the only one. I've heard of so many cases of people beating cancer with uh, CBD oil. And um, there's other things, too. I've, I've seen a ton of cases also of people beating it with energy medicine, like the Qigong clinics over in China. So do aliens exist? Marine veteran investigates UFOs on the Discovery Channel. It's called Contact, a new show. And so Nick Carnes, a former intelligence officer with the Marine Corps Special Operations Command, he's searching for answers about aliens and they're looking at different cases. And the cases they're looking at are the 5% as of now that can't be explained by science or any sort of rational explanation. And we're following the data to research some unbelievable events and what we are discovering will blow your mind. And as we know, the Pentagon recently de declassified millions of documents, and the show's investigators are combing through them. It's all part of a secret government program known as AATIP, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, which study reports of unidentified flying objects. So Carnes, along with six other experts, deployed CIA-developed link analyst software, special ops and intelligence training, and on-the-ground journalism with an unprecedented global investigation hoping to determine if aliens have made contact with Earth. And uh, here we see in our conversation with Carnes, he shares details of a Navy fighter jet encounter with a UFO off the coast of San Diego. The object moves so fast that according to the experts they interviewed, if a human being was inside it, they would be turned to paste. So what was it? what was it there are so many cases of that and if you really look at it you know in the middle ages there's so many paintings that were done and you see ufos in them and we see ufos in uh, all sorts of archaeo archaeological relics as well obviously obviously there's something out there there's got to be there's there's just so much overwhelming evidence in my opinion and this is also talking about um, the same gentleman and talking about the, the cigar-shaped ones that a lot of people are seeing. And we have talked about that as well. Naughty Beaver caught a completely energetic one. Um, there's been a lot of those sightings. And some have said that the cigar-shaped ones are the, the Draco. So interesting. But a lot of these have been popping up. The Mojave Desert over in California as well. Wyoming. Another one over in New York. Now, some of them appear energetic and look to be like giant, what we would call rods. And some of them look to be more like a ship. And here we have 12 amazing cinder block raised garden beds. So just some ideas for the gardeners out there, people that are going to be growing some of their own food. So much stuff that you could do with cinder blocks. And you can see raised beds can be made from all sorts of materials. 
But here, these are very useful, and, and some of them can be very beautiful as well, and very strong and durable. As you see, some different designs. You can also terrace them. As you see, some creativity there. Yeah, it's, it is possible to get a lot out of a little space, especially when you terrace like this. And this is our Yogapedia. You are not your thoughts. So this author's favorite affirmation or mantra during a yoga class is, I am not my body, I am not my mind. And, you know, that left brain just never shuts up for most of us. It's always constantly going, and it's always repeating the same sort of thoughts over and over. We actually quite rarely have original thoughts. Most of us are just repeating the same things every single day, constantly in our mind. So there's so much power, and you can gain so much insight instilling that mind. And this is one mantra uh, that has been recommended and it's been recommended by people such as Sadhguru that could help you with this. And I shared with you guys before when I was five years old and my brother died, it's just, it impacted me uh, greatly. And I remembered just staring at the wall, just staring at the wall blankly. And then all of, all of a sudden having this sensation that I was like behind and above my body and just realizing I'm not the body, you know, I'm, I have a body, I'm in there, but I'm not the body, um, more than the body, and somehow I don't even have to be encapsulated in the body, and with good, consistent meditative practices, you, you could experience that and so much more, and so that is one of the uh, affirmations that you can use, or a mantra that you can use. And as this article gets into, it's, it's just all about stilling the mind. Because when we still that left brain, then sometimes amazing things can happen. We could get tremendous insights and inspirations. And so many people like Tesla and brilliant, brilliant people like that have had that happen, where they channel these ideas and they don't even know where it comes from. But one of the keys is stilling the mind. And I was going to sh share with you some of these photos that you guys sent in. And this is one that's, well, it's kind of interesting. And I don't believe they're behind any sort of glass. Looks like they're out somewhere in the woods or in the desert there. But you see this interesting black object up there. Or is it a black object? What is that? I don't know. What do you guys think? Any thoughts on that? And it's kind of interesting when we look at the the rays coming off of the sun and this kind of darkness over here. That's kind of curious. And then here we have one, obviously nighttime, and there's something here in the center. I can't make this out. It is interesting when you look at all these patterns and the pixelation I guess although a lot of times you know if you're energy sensitive you could see the energy moving around the life force moving around and here's some anomalies from JRB and again it's so tough sometimes to tell you know what's just simply a reflection what's not you know any type of distortion and then we get these blips so I know you guys a lot of times see things in things I don't see
and we had some down here here's some orbs a lot of people believe orbs are just simply other beings and now we had some people that were experimenting with the technique that Allison uses and Allison's the uh, person that was sending in so many of the spirit photos and so we've had some people have some success and doing it on their own and so what do you guys see in here Do you see some sort of angelic being over here? It's interesting. I see a face right here. Let's see if we play with the lighting a little. Maybe it's always so easy to see things and things. Yeah, that kind of, that really does look like a face right there. I don't know if that almost looks like a long beard. So interesting. And then here's another one. And so this one's really uh, very curious right away I see eyes right there this does kind of look like a fetus doesn't it sort of but there's faces like everywhere in this one That almost looks like a gray to me, a gray alien sort of. There's another face sitting back in there. Wow, there's a face over there. And there's another one right there. Actually, you can see them kind of all over. And so many of them look kind of alien-ish. Yeah, there's one right there. So what do you guys make of that as well? So hello everyone. Thank you everybody for joining me. It's good to see you guys here again. And uh, yeah. Heather Dawn says the Grays sees them. There's um, just so many interesting things going on all around us on so many different levels. And, um, you know, a lot of this stuff is coming out. And we've talked about this being, you know, the time of the apocalypse. And apocalypse, again, means unveiling. And so it's kind of like we're learning all the things that have been hidden from us for so long. And... Unfortunately, there's forces that don't want us talking about it, and they are the ones that are kind of in control of our whole situation and even controlling the media that we use to get information out. And uh, that's really unfortunate, but it is the truth, and it is the case. And um, I, I didn't put it up uh, to read to you guys, but I did see, too, where... There was, um, well, you know, the thought was that there's a lot of governmental and big corporate trolls. I mean, they're people that are paid to be trolls. That's what their job is. And, uh, and it's in order to create like a disinfo scenario or a debunking scenario. And, of course, we know um, something like Snopes. You know, Snopes, they're all about just debunking everything. And they're obviously, you know, a tool for certain powers. And there's a lot of them out there like that. And there are a lot of people that perhaps are actually, when you see them come and troll, they're actually doing their job. They're, they're, they're being paid for that. 
And uh, it, it's all in an effort to discredit certain things. Yeah, exactly. They are paid to distract the chosen, the ones that are actually waking up. And um, But we are waking up regardless, and we could see through it. It's just so obvious. It, it's just getting more obvious every day. And so we're seeing these different things, like this gentleman that cured his cancer with CBD oil. I've heard of so many cases of that recently. And you know how big a business um, the medical industry is, and especially how much money cancer brings in. It, it brings in tremendous money, unfortunately. And uh, that's the sad situation, is it, it doesn't pay for people to recover a lot of times as far as the you know, the industries themselves. And that's so sad. That's where everything needs to be completely changed. The whole system has to be changed. And we've been brought up in this capitalistic system and taught that it's the only way. And uh, if, you know, if you're not a capitalist, then you're a communist, right? And uh, you might as well go to Russia or China, you know, and see how those systems are. But it doesn't need to be just two systems. There could be more than two systems. We could figure something else out that's going to work. You know, we could go back to the days of barter and trade. We could look at things and ideas like Ubuntu uh, that Michael Tellinger has, you know, piloted and other things like that. There are communities that rise up. Uh, Ruby, uh, one of our family members, was telling me how awesome uh, time he had at Burning Man last year and was saying that, Everybody just kind of simply, you know, traded and bartered with each other and just, you know, worked things out. There must be a better way, and we're going to find that better way. We really are. That's the time that we're in now because we are waking up. And, um, yeah, exactly. Um, anything for profit is ultimately misguided. Yes, bravo. That's true, you know, and it, it, it just gets us going down the wrong way. If we're talking about unity consciousness and recognizing the oneness in all things, then, you know, we obviously want to make sure that nobody is harmed. It's just a totally different way of thinking, totally different mindset that we, than we've had for this Kali Yuga, you know, this dark age that we've lived in for the last several thousands of years. You know, perhaps back 5,000 years, maybe back 10,000 years. We know that last great uh, cataclysm was thought to be about 11,900 years ago or so. And, um, you know, we're potentially heading into another one of those, according to many people's thoughts, you know. And this is a time of huge transition, huge transition as we are changing Literally, our DNA is changing from all the cosmic rays coming in. And many of you out there believe in the ascension process and the fact that, you know, our consciousness is changing. Most definitely, we could feel energy more than we have been able to in the past. You know, as an energy practitioner, t for me, it's just amazing the difference between now and just a few years ago. It's exponential. It's exponential. The... The raising in frequency, which we can see reflected in the Schumann resonance. Everything is just changing. And yet this system, which has not been really for the benefit of humanity, there are those that benefited being inside the system. And as we know, the, the total difference between the ultra-rich and the rest of uh, society is just growing by leaps and bounds. And the power and the control is just getting consolidated into fewer and fewer hands and more and more firmly until perhaps, you know, th the time that we're in right now where even though they still have that power and control, the populace is waking up in mass. And it's going to stop. It's going to change. It is definitely going to change. And it's already changing when you have companies like Monsanto getting sued for billions and actually losing it, even with their powerful lobbying. So this is this is wonderful as as we step into a new era and everything is going to be right out there in the open. Part of the changes is that, and the CIA has done studies on this, 
so they know it, we're all getting more intuitive. So many of us can see energy, can, can just visually see energy. And so, you know, one of the young ones um, in the circle that I find myself in currently, uh, she could see auras really clearly. And so we always ask her every day, what's the dominant color? What are you seeing? And we're trying to cultivate that because society wants to put that down. And so many people are born with amazing gifts, but then you're told by society, you know, no, that's not real. You know, don't do that. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody what you see. Don't tell anybody, you know, what you're doing because it's got to be hidden. And, um, but that's all changing. That's all changing. And when you could see somebody's energy and say you're watching one of the politicians and they're making a speech and you could see their energy change as they start lying to us more and more, you know, then the jig is up. It's just up. And, uh, you know, you can't get by with that anymore. And that's what's happening. So they're not going to be able to keep pulling the wool over our eyes. But they are in a panic state right now. And they are doing everything they can. Um, they are doing everything they can to hold on to that control for as long as they want. And Papillon says, all of the great messengers got hijacked. And, you know, that is so true. And it goes, we've talked about the church. We've talked about the fact that, you know, the Christianity that we have now is is not the only Christianity that was being practiced. In fact, there were so many different forms of Christianity being practiced that it really was not a unified religion at all. It was, there was so many different thoughts and philosophies out there and hundreds of Gospels, of which we only have four, and if you do read the Nag Hammadi, go into the t all the texts that they found there that were all burned. Every, every, all the copies were burned. We, we talked about book burnings by the Nazis and also by the Catholic Church uh, in order to control information. And there's basically book burnings going on right now on the Internet. And it's basically being purged of some information that, that certain powers that be don't want getting out there so i know when i go do research and it's like well i know i found this before and why can't i find this again it's just not there because you know things are being removed left and right it's just part of the the plan and the programming yeah there are there are so many different forms of Christianity out there, but not just that too. Take a look at Buddhism. Look what happened with Buddhism as well, as it ended up branching off into different forms as well. And some are very, very uh, dogmatic, you know, and, and dogma is something that keeps us from spirituality. When we become so dogmatic that it overrides the, the core of the message, it's really a sad thing, but it happens time and time again. And it does happen in pretty much every religion that we see out there. So again, so many now are looking to basically find that common core, find the unity, and get past, you know, all the dogma that has so dominated us. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that is happening now as we speak. And we can all get along and I agree that there is beauty in our diversity and so there's really no need for conformity I mean if there was such a need for conformity would we all be so different we should embrace the fact that we're all unique and different and it's a beautiful thing but we can't find our unity in that just as there are different cells in the body because you know a liver cell and a stomach cell, they're not exactly the same thing. But in a way, they're dependent on the greater whole. And it's the same thing with us right here. We're all living on the planet and we are all intertwined, even though there are so many powerful forces that actually seem to hate the planet in the way that they treat it, by poisoning it, poisoning everything on it. It's really a very sad situation. But again, we're waking up 
and we're going to change the system and that's why we're here those of you that are here those of you in the chat room those of you that are watching this most of you know that you're here with a mission and part of your mission is that you're going to change the frequency you're going to change the consciousness of this planet and that's why there are so many people that are waking up right now and realizing that they're not on the right path you know they have to change something in their lives because something's just missing something is just missing something you know there's something they could be doing i'm i'm talking to a lot of clients and uh, a lot of you guys out there and you're getting that sense in a lot of you guys it's what it is is that you came here with the mission of changing the consciousness on the planet of changing the system and you're not fully in that yet but you want to be you're not fully in the swing of how and and that's one of the big questions you know how do you impact things positively and it could be just doing what you're doing out there right now and just sharing the love and not going and falling prey to the hatred and the divisiveness that's out there and then speaking up and being a great example of of living a life that's actually compassionate and in service to others as well as you know taking care of your needs and your family's needs and those of you that study the law of one you know, or talks about service to others there's basically two paths service to others or service to self and it's not that the service to self path is necessarily evil especially if you know you're in service to your true self where you're say choosing a simple life kind of off by yourself for the most part developing yourself spiritually think of you know say a monk in a buddhist monastery or there are pious monks as well in christian and catholic monasteries as well you know every system has its saints and every tradition has its saints and uh, i want to do um, some videos on that as well i was going to highlight some people that have made tremendous impacts on the world in in many different ways some of them you might not ever heard of uh, but they were shining examples of amazing love and compassion and really affected so many people in such, you know, amazing ways. And you could think of, you know, uh, St. Francis or St. Uh, Mother Teresa. There's so many people out there like Gandhi and, you know, it goes on and on besides the obvious ones, you know, like Christ and Buddha. And we did the Tao Te Ching, and we were talking about Lao Tzu. We, we covered the Tao Te Ching, which has some amazing wisdom in it as well. And even though we are in this world of duality, as the yin and yang sign points out, the greater, the greater truth is the unity that underlies it, from which it springs. And so that's part of what people are starting to wake up you know two again and so yeah there is one source ultimately and so in in the Taoist view that source is unnameable it's unknowable it's way beyond our comprehension in a Taoist view anything that could be named is not the original source is not the prime creator that well, and then we we go into Hinduism, and if you break up Shiva, Shiva, as many of you know, Shiva as the destroyer, Shiva actually means that which is not. And again, it's it's interesting. And the Gnostics, yes, I see somebody talking about the Gnostic Gospels, Karen is, and um, Gnosticism again, it's gnosis, and that only comes from going within, and so the reason that we haven't been encouraged to go within is because we've been given mindsets ideals and dogma to keep us preoccupied so that we won't look within and discover what's truly in our own hearts and so that's something that's changing as well as we learn about traditions from all over the globe and we find our commonality which is a beautiful thing so Michelle says, the audio sounds like I have the hiccups. Uh, this one always sounded pretty clear, but you never know. They could be catching on that I've gone live again and starting to interfere. Because everything has been working uh, beautifully well, and actually. Uh, but again, 
that's what happened before. Uh, they've had my mic turned off on me during a, a live stream before. I've had the live streams cut off before. You know, it's it's stuff that they do. So we'll go uh, live as long as we can. And then uh, we might find other ven ven venues as well for going live, such as over on Vimeo. As that might be an option as well. As we know that the powers that be have full control over this particular venue. So my friends, I want to thank you guys for joining me once again. And thank you for your support over on Patreon and Ko-Fi. I encourage everybody to go. Uh, and if they feel so uh, inclined, then join us over on Patreon and uh, see some exclusive videos that will be going up over there. And a lot of it's going to be stuff that we can't just touch here because it'll be automatically taboo, <laughs> which is the case, and uh, we'll get censored. So we'll be able to speak much more plainly and uh, bring up a lot of things that are going on. There's so much coming out right now, so much coming out right now. And that's why there's such a push to keep us from talking about it, because it's just it's getting to be pretty obvious. So my friends, as always, much love, God bless, and namaste.